reels from zero to one are uncountable, right? So for any reel that you have, let's say, call it, I don't know, let's call it RI, it doesn't really matter, is zero point, and we had this whole decimal I1, decimal I2, decimal I3, etc. For any reel that exists between zero and one, they're all going to look like this, right? It's just that I can't index them. I can't say there's a first, second, or third. They're uncountable. If I try to do that, or if I assume that I can do that, then I show that's always false, therefore I can't do it. So it's the step above countability, so uncountable. And again, uh, the current conjecture is that the cardinality of the reals is the same as, as uh, ALIF 1, that next step up in the trans finites. Now, but on the other hand, if I would look at this, I could say, you know what, this kind of looks, you know, if I would take, for example, Let's do that, that one that I like to do, 0 0.1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, dot, 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 right? And I'll call him my real, which is none, right? It's irrational. This is my irrational real. On the other hand, if I would look at this, it's this particular number. This kind of acts like a function. <coughs> from z plus to the decimals, 0, 1, 2, up to 9. You know, if I would look at this, I'd sit there and say, you know what, like for example, I could say that the function of this particular number is an n. It's just going to spit out the nth decimal of our number. So, for example, what would be f of 3? What's the third decimal in that, in that? As you go across, what's the third one that you see? 1. What would be f of 4? 0. What would be f of 5? What would be f of 6? Right? Pretty straightforward. So any decimal number that's between 0 and 1, I could say, hey, let's just spit out the decimals. It kind of acts like a storage place for the function. And this function, you know, if I would look at it, I could even plot it. I can notice that from 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6, it goes, starts off at 1, then it goes to 0, and then it goes to 1, and then it goes to 0, and then 0, and then it goes to 1, right? I can look at it like that way. I mean, that number could be like the decimals themselves. I'll just, I'll write the decimals down as dots. And this is just a function from the ints to one of the decimals, right? So I could take anything. You could take, say, pi and get rid of the 3, right? Say pi minus 3, so it's 0.1415, right? You can just go 1, 4, 1, 5. <laughs> you just go through here and you put all those dots. They kind of act like a function. Now, in particular, any function that works on the int integers is called a number theoretic function because it just works on number theory. Number theory is only studying the studying the ints. And so if we would consider that like this, what does that if every real from zero to one has a function version of it, you know, kind of that like I had just like on this example. How many functions like that exist? How many reals are there between 0 and 1? But uh, uh, uncountably infinite. So how many of these functions exist? Uncountably infinite. So that tells us, so these functions that just simply map from z plus to a decimal, 0, 1, 2, a very simple function. It's a function that simply maps. I'm not going to map to all reals. I'm just going to go from the ints to something between 0 and 9 are uncountably infinite. Not only are they infinite, they're uncountably infinite. They're, they're bigger than our countable ones. And they're very simple functions, right? All right.
computer programming languages are called functionally complete, right? If they can essentially do everything that you would do mathematically, right? They can apply to any particular function. Well, any language that you guys have learned, Python, C, C++, Fortran, MATLAB, Octave, whatever, those are functionally complete. And really, functional completeness just it, 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 in its most basic sense is assignment, simple ops like plus and bit shift, and then flow control, which you can usually handle with a go to. But flow control is like an if and a loop, right? And you can handle a loop with an if. And so there's ways around it. So you just need flow control, assignment, and operations. If you can do that, you can do anything you can do with a function. But programming. uses strings, right? You type it out. You just type it out and you just go, it's like you go sit along here and okay. Now you don't do it this way normally, right? You can have your keyboard here and you have your assignment and you can go up to this keyboard and then close your eyes and start beating on the keyboard as hard as you can and then you try to compile it and see if it did what you wanted it to do. It doesn't even compile. So you close your eyes, you delete everything, you start pounding on the keyboard again, and out comes something, right? Now, if you had, remember that whole, there's a story, like an infinite number of monkeys with an infinite number of keyboards, typewriters, typing for an infinite amount of time, you know, random strings, eventually everything that ever could be written would be in those strings, right? If you think about that. It's like, if you actually have a true random stuff, like they have things like this. Uh, if I had a book of all random stuff, which is infinitely long, with random strings, not in that book would be my name, where I was born, when I was born, followed by where I will die, and when I will die. Not only that, it will actually have my name, where I was born, when I was born, and followed by every possible location with every possible date. Right? Everything that could ever occur is going to be there. Period. So that's the idea of randomness. If it's possible, right? There's a lot of gibberish, but there's times where it'll make sense. Well, since programming uses strings, but strings are from what? A finite set. But that means what? It's countable. So if you have this keyboard your first choice of hitting something is what? And so a program is really just simply symbol 1 followed by symbol 2 followed by symbol 3 followed by symbol 4, etc. Isn't that just what a program is? It's just a bunch of symbols. Now normally we say programs actually are supposed to do something, but, <laughs> but every one of these is from a finite set. And so now this is like, this is essentially uh, like Hilbert's Grand Hotel, where I have a finite number of people that show up, right? We would have all possible, we'd go across here and I have, you know, go infinite this direction, but as I go down, I only have finite, right? Except instead of giving everybody a room, I would simply only say, well, only one of the first person gets a room, and then I go to the next row and pick one from that, and next row and one from that. But if I would do all possible things that would ever occur, it's still countable. So because of this is happening, that tells us that anything that you could possibly write, sure, it's infinite, because this doesn't stop. If we allow it to go infinitely long, this, because it's finite, is going to be countably infinite. And now we get into the problem. How many, how many of these very simple functions where I just simply say move to the right and put a dot between 0 and 9 and then move over in it and put a dot? How many of those functions exist? Uncountably infinite. If you wanted to program those functions, how many functions can you program? Only countable. So that tells you how many functions exist that you could never program. Uncountable. 
So things that actually have a program, we have a word. So if a function has a program, we call it computable. If a function does not have a program, we call it uncomputable. And through that discussion here, what do I know? Because all functions are uncountable, but programs are countable, It gives us the following thing. We have an uncountable, so an uncountably infinite group of uncomputable functions. There's, an, there's a countably infinite number. Really, it's going to be finite. Why? Why is it finite? Well, in actual reality, you have a finite amount of memory, and you have a finite amount of time to actually write a program. So the programs that could ever possibly that would exist by people actually coding is obviously finite, not infinite. So they're still countable. But it tells us that the entire group of functions, something as simple as putting dots between 0 and 9 from 1 to infinity, there's an uncountable infinite number of those that you could not write a program for. Now, for the one I did, does that one obviously have a program? That's pretty easy to code. What would you do? Put a 1, go to 0, go to 1, go 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's, you, can e you can all follow the rules. If there's a set of rules that you can easily follow, you can program it. Now comes the hard part, what I just said. So uncomputable somehow says that there are no rules that, you, that we can actually even do that will allow us to create it. And we spend our entire life making up rules, right? What do you do? Do this, do this, do this, do this. You get to the answer. And we say, this is beyond mathematics. This is beyond our ability to do. By the end of discrete 2, we'll introduce such a function. But this is the same issue. This un part, things that are not, are hard to get your head wrapped around. And the particular function is called the busy beaver function. It's very easy to describe, but it ends up being that the sequence itself, there is no possible, it's just a straightforward function. There is nothing we could do mathematically that would ever generate the numbers, even though I can describe what's making these numbers. <laughs> it's nice that we have a countably so, but it's kind of interesting that things that this is one of those things where example of math, math models things that are. There are things that are that math cannot handle. But we can think about it, and we can model them, and we can try different things. It's kind of interesting when people say, are people just simply in algorithms? Like, of course not. I can come up with things that algorithms are stuck within one particular branch of math. 